Hello, this is Taylor Elwood with ND Author Business Success, and I'm so excited because joining me today is Rob Garcia. Rob, please go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, Taylor, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, I'm Rob Garcia out of San Diego. I'm an eight-time self-published author, and I'm the creator of Shift Advanced Life Design Magazine. Okay, and tell us a little bit about Shift Advanced Life Design Magazine. What is, what is that magazine all about? Shift highlights high performers, and I originally, when I created it, I thought, what would it look like if Tim Ferriss made a magazine, uh, something that interviews experts and pros and deconstructs their processes? Oh, excellent. So definitely for those of you who are out there trying to, you know, create a business around your writing and around classes and other related things, that magazine might be helpful to you because then you get an insider's peek as to what's going on with other other people. So of course, you know, our focus here is on people who are indie authors, i.e. self-publishers, people who are writing books and producing them. You said you've published eight, eight books yourself. Um, now, what I've seen with you is that one of the one of the bits of advice that you give out is is how to help people get interviews, how to go out there and market themselves and promote themselves. And I think that one of the stereotypes we see with authors is, you know, the tendency for authors to just want to sit at home and write uh, books, which, you know, hey, that's great. You got to produce those books, but you also have to market them. So why is it important for an indie author to get out there and get interviewed about whatever it is they're writing about? The more visible that you are and the more recognizable that you are, the more people are going to want to buy your stuff, regardless of what genre you write in. Uh, it's very important that you create trust and repetition in the eyes of your audience. Nobody, you know, nobody uh, wants to buy from a ghost. And I always tell people to understand the difference between a business brand versus a personal brand. And indie authors, believe it or not, Taylor, are actually more of a personal brand. You think about someone like Tom Clancy or, you know, J.K. Rowling or somebody, people are oftentimes just as fascinated by the person as the book. That's absolutely true. I mean, that's that's my experience that, you know, it, when you have an audience, the people want to connect with you as much as they want to connect with your book. And, and that's true, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. In fact, I think there's always kind of that that delicate balance of knowing how to knowing how to focus on what they're interested in, what they want to learn about, whether or, or what they want to get entertained about, uh, but also knowing how to introduce enough of yourself in there so that they're getting to know you because you're always going to be there. They're going to, if, if a lot of times people will buy books and they're like, well, I really like this person's style, everything else. And they start wanting to get to know that person better. Yeah, I'd agree. So it's, it's a very important thing. So, um, Tell me a little bit about the books that you've published and, and what made you decide to go into self-publishing? Because you mentioned you've published eight of them. Yeah, so I, I, um, I wrote books according to what part of my life I was in. So when I first started off, my first book I, I really created on my own was called Teen Juggernaut. And what really changed about a decade ago, Taylor, was that uh, self-publishing tools became available to everybody. And so we didn't have to get a contract. We didn't have to, you know, pay somebody to ghostwrite it and, and, and the whole process. And so we actually gained the power to uh, create our own books. And so I got into lulu.com and went crazy. And once I figured out like how to make, you know, how to put a book together, I, I wrote Teen Juggernaut. I talked about my own issues going from like, uh, high school dropout to PhD. And, and I put in a bunch of manga cartoons and all this different stuff. And I really, I still love this book. It just, I tried to put as much fun stuff into it for teenagers. And I got on the news for it immediately, which was, um, you know, a, a blessing. And so as my life progressed, um, I started writing about the things that were just, I'm one of those weird guys that I don't have a set genre uh in writing so like one book was about early dieting um you know before uh, paleo and south beach and keto and all that stuff i was just talking about like how to avoid flour and all that stuff um another one was about charter schools because i was a high school teacher at the time and then um another one was on uh tech jobs another one was on adult success and my last one i wrote was the next level supercharged and this one is about speed learning so it isolates how to do any job or skill better. 
Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think that a lot of times people get this notion that they have to be an expert in one field or, you know, in a limited number of fields when in fact you can write on a wide variety of topics. I mean, I write on, I write business books, I write um, books on esoteric spirituality and I write fiction. So, I mean, you know, there's no reason to limit yourself, but I think a lot of times people get super focused on this idea that they have to be an expert in one area when in fact you can be an expert in multiple areas, you know, things that are relevant to you and still get out there and connect with people. Um, what do you think are some of the challenges that indie authors face sometimes when they're trying to go out and connect with people in terms of publicity, you know, getting interviews and things like that? Um, oftentimes self-perception and confidence are a huge issue because indie authors will place roadblocks in their mind, you know, what Tony Robbins calls limiting beliefs. And they feel like, oh, well, I'm an unknown. Nobody's going to want to read my stuff. You know, I'll never get picked for anything. And that's completely untrue, Taylor. So you've known me a long time. I've known you before the magazine, uh, about four years. And what caught my eye about you was you were wearing a Truman Capote-ish hat. And I was like, whoa, this guy is somebody I would have hung out with in high school. This guy's awesome. I want to know more. <laughs> I'm gonna, and, and that's the power of visuals, though. That's the power of good video and, and, and being yourself. I've never met anyone that loves being themselves like you do, which is which is why, you know, we both stuck around all this time. Oh, for sure. Um, but uh, for myself, I came from absolutely unknown to over 160 interviews. And I did that because I crafted my story. I figured out how to be interesting when I'm speaking. I, I maintained a strong camera presence and indie authors, what they really need to do is they need to make sure they have talking points. So whatever their book is about, make sure that you can, you can uh, share the why of some, why someone should buy this. For example, you know, next level supercharge. Well, pick it up because there are 16 speed learning techniques in here. There are experts with five, or sorry, there are interviews with five expert celebrities and then there are interactive worksheets, boom. Best selling book I've ever made. Great. Well, there you go. And I mean, I think the fact that you you have those talking points and that you're ready to connect with people and tell them like, here's why you want to read this book. Here's what there is to offer about it. And here's why you want to interview me so you can learn more about these speed learning techniques is, is, is exactly the essential thing. It's kind of like writing a back cover blurb. Yep. You know, it's the same kind of skill set in a way because you know, you only have so much space, you have to be able to write that back cover blurb and sell people on why they want to pick up that book. Because that beyond that and the cover, they're not going to necessarily take a look inside unless something grabs them and captivates them enough to want to find out more. Exactly. You have to talk about benefits, not features. Exactly. You know, you, you touched on something a little bit earlier, you, you know, you when you're talking about, you know, in terms of personality, and I, I think it's true, you know, I am unapologetically myself, I don't really much care, you know, how people take that or not, because the fact of the matter is like, you know, I'm an eccentric, there you go. I'm fine with it. But I think that that's so important that you have to be willing to be yourself. And I think a lot of times people try to filter themselves so carefully, because they're so concerned with their public image and their professional, the way they appear professionally. But at a certain point, you know, part of the effectiveness, at least of a personal brand, not so much a business brand per se, but a personal brand is that you have to be willing to be yourself. And it's something I admire about you as well. So what advice do you, what, what advice would you give to a, an indie author in regards to that when they're going into an interview? Like what, what do they need to recognize and remember to just, sh so that they can just show up and be themselves instead of being all filtered? That's such a great question. First of all, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Um, the first thing to remember is that people, especially audiences love variety. Okay. Uh, they love people that are outside the box. They love people that are a little wacky. If you look at if you look at what viral videos are really popular, it's never somebody that's boring or soft spoken or you know unconfident. It's always some, and the media loves this, but it's always some lunatic, right? It's always the most outlandish person they can find to interview, and you don't have to go nuts, but definitely you know, uh, bring out the best parts of your personality. Wear some cool jewelry, like like. Just bring out what accentuates you and the things that you love about yourself that stand out that make you a little bit different. Yeah, well, I like your Iron Man shirt today. I was noticing, I was commenting on that right before we got started and I, and I love it. Cause I mean, obviously Iron Man is your favorite character from the Avengers. You had a post about <laughs> it on Facebook. 
And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, here you are wearing that shirt. I mean, you're showing up as you. And that's the thing is that I, I think at the end of the day, people want to interact with the person. You know, they don't want a carefully sculpted brand. They, they want the reality because, and yeah, and yeah, you may turn some people off, but the reality is, is that I, I think more people are turned off by fakeness than they are by authenticity. Anyone that was, that's turned off by the fact that I wear Iron Man shirts regularly is not part of my tribe. And that's, that's what indie authors need to remember. Uh, you don't have to worry about pleasing everybody. And the people that would ever criticize or judge you are not on your same level of frequency or resonation. And so uh, be, be proud of the, the silly and goofy things um, that make you fun. Yeah, exactly. And I think you speak to something, something that, that's kind of speaks to that there is in a sense, own your attitude, own your positiveness, you know, own, own what makes you shine. So that way you stand out because people aren't going to notice a wallflower. Exactly. My, my favorite branding coach ever from four years ago that we're still friends today uh, has, has purple hair and started off making videos with a stuffed sloth. And now she makes a lot of money teaching branding. <laughs> Well, there you go. I mean, that's what matters at the end of the day. It's, it's all about how you show up and, 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 and get out there. I mean, your audience will connect with you if, if it's something that interests them and if, if they want more. So I, I think another thing too that indie authors need to learn how to do sometimes is that they need to learn how to ask for the interview. So what suggestions do you have for that? Like, and, and how they might even go about researching who they want to get interviewed with? Because you don't necessarily want to just get interviewed with anybody per se, but you do want to reach out to the right people. Right. And you need to, you've just, you've just touched upon a really good point is that you don't want to reach out to everybody. You want to reach out to the people with the audience that would love your book. And so there are a couple of ways to do this. You can go specific or you can go general, depending on what type of thing, what type of person you are and what you've written about. So I'll give you a perfect example. So for example, I'm an Air Force reservist. I'm a master sergeant. And so I can reach out to any military podcast and automatically, you know, have that front of the line privilege because uh, I'm a veteran. But I can also make it very general and reach out to author podcasts. I can reach out to uh, business podcasts, entrepreneurship. And then if I want to go industry, then I can reach out to educational podcasts, um, you know, speed learning podcasts, things like that, or former educators. So you really got to look at, okay, what's everything? What are the key words that I am connected to? You know, what are the five words that describe who I am? I'm Hispanic. I could reach out to, you know, Latin podcasts, uh, I'm military. So I reach out to veteran stuff and you can go, you can go with these descriptors and this is what helps to narrow down. So a veteran might really like my stuff because I'm a veteran and somebody who's got a kid who's having trouble in school might like that. They see me on an education podcast and that I was a former teacher. So it's really your media plan. Your, your, your whole plan of attack comes from what your book is about and who comprises you yeah no i think i think that's great and so knowing that and i think i, I know for myself i mean i've done done this research before myself is sometimes uh you, you know you have to go out there and start following like the people that are doing what you want to be doing and see, like finding out where are they showing up you know who are they getting in touch with who you know what podcasts because then you can reach out and ask the people who are running that podcast if they'd be interested in interviewing you. I know a lot, especially more so in my early years on the esoteric side of things, I would do that a lot of the time. Now, nowadays, I mean, I pretty much just let people reach out to me because I'm busy with other things, but you know, it was a great way to get some fame and awareness and attention around those kinds of things because all of a sudden like, oh, hey, here's this person knocking on the door. He's written a few books. I need somebody to interview. And I think that that's also a key important, like have enough confidence in yourself to be able to say, yes, hey, I, I want to interview you. Or, or I want to be interviewed by you. Like I actually did that with you last week. I was like, hey, I want to interview you. Like, and you're like, all right, well, when? let's do it. And, you know, so having that confidence is important. Like don't, don't hesitate to ask for, for something that you want. I mean, worst you're going to get is a no. Yeah. And that, that's been a big lesson for me with a magazine. Actually, I've, I've interviewed some pretty famous people and it's a couple millionaires and it's, it's always a matter of the value proposition and the, the key phrase that I have learned that opens many doors is value to audience. 
And so you never want to go uh, when you're pitching a stranger and say, hey, uh, I'd like an interview on your show. What you want to say is, hey, I love the show. I listened to episode X, Y, and Z. This is what I liked about it. Okay, so now you have personalization. Um, if you have any openings, I would love to be considered for, for an interview. I'll talk about this, this, and this. Um, and then I'll make sure to teach this for your audience. And so you want to really stress and emphasize the value to the audience, the listeners, the viewers, uh, whoever, whatever format it is. So that's, that's really a better pitch. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. And a lot of times, you know, when you're going out there, you might make it all about you and you really have to make, make sure that you're making it about your audience. And ideally, as an indie author, you already know who your audience is, because if you're writing a book and you don't know who your audience is, that's where you're going to have a problem. You know, and I think a lot of times, um, you know, when people will reach out, if, if, if they're only making it about themselves, then I'm going to be like, well, I don't know if I really want to bring this person on because, you know, they're not really, they're not bringing value to the audience. They're not showing that they care about the community, whoever that community is. Whereas if I see somebody who is willing to go out there and say, well, here's what I can do, here are the benefits, then that's going to actually say to me, okay, well, this is somebody who's going to add value to my audience and is going to help them in some way, shape, or form become better at what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, always focus on what the audience is going to get out of it. If you could show up and have a downloadable PDF, even better. Yeah, exactly. Because then, you know, people get a chance to learn a little bit more about you and what you have to offer. And I mean, you have the win-win of getting those people on an e-list, which is always a good thing. I mean, we always have to think about it from our online marketing perspective that we're we're not just we're not just showing up and, and, and getting a bit of publicity what we're really trying to go for is building that online presence building that connection in people's lives and being able to show up consistently then after that so that way you know if people do decide they want to buy something from us they see the value not just from the podcast but from the continued presence afterwards Exactly. And if you don't mind, Taylor, I'd like to share a couple of uh, pro Please. tips that people usually don't think of. So um, the first thing to do is to have your freebies lined up. Okay. So if you're going to go on this podcast, the best way to do it is to have some type of opt-in page where they can enter an email and you can capture their email and then they get to download a PDF. And then you also can pop a video on it. So then they get to see you personally, get some advice, your call to action, whatever your offer is. Because so many people can go, you know, you get your traffic from when they, they listen to the podcast and then they'll go to that web page and then boom, now you got their email and now you've connected with them on a, on a video level. So that's one tip. The second tip is once you've gotten the podcast, add it to your main website, your branding. Everybody that's an indie author that has a, a website should have a section for media or as featured on. Once they have that page, start listing out the interviews, links to interviews, screenshots. If it's a video interview like this, take a screenshot of it and then have a descriptor and a link. This adds to your proof of concept and your brand value to your audience. Exactly. And I think that's really important. Having that kind of resource list is also handy down the line because if you want to do speak at professional conferences or things like that, being able to say, hey, here's why you want to have me. Here's all the places that I've been interviewed can make a huge difference. Yeah, my, my media page on my website is ridiculous. I, I actually haven't updated it in probably a year and a half. Um, and it's it, it's a little crazy and out of control, but it's like a snowball. And once once you get those first three under your belt, you're more confident. And then it's just, it's just like walking your dog. It's like an everyday thing. Yeah, I, I found that to be true as well. And, and, and you start having fun with it. I mean, especially when you're able to connect with somebody in a way that's that, where you're really resonating, it, it, it becomes a lot more fun. So I think that's really important too. Now, if someone is new to this, do you have a service or a product that you offer to help them start learning the ropes of how to get out there and get interviews and do some of this marketing in relationship to connecting with people? Yeah, there's, there's two routes we can take. So I do offer consulting calls uh, where I walk them through how to create a media plan, how to research, you know, podcasts in your genre, how to create a media sheet, how to write a pitch. Um, all that stuff. They get a month, month's worth of planning. It's pretty robust. And I do follow up and my results are guaranteed or you get money back. 
And then if they're really into it, um, I always tell them to join Tactical CEQ. It's my visibility course where somebody can join and they'll learn how to like attract celebrities for cross promotion, um, create social media for their, for their launch plan, get a bunch of interviews and it's, it's done with them. So I walk them through for all six weeks. So those are, those are both options. Excellent. And I might add, just follow, just following you on your social media. I mean, you're always giving a lot of, of free content as well. Not that you shouldn't take advantage of Rob's classes, but the fact of the matter is like you, you do videos almost every day you do, or every day, maybe um, you do a lot of stuff. So, I mean, I think it's important to acknowledge that too, because you're always out there giving. And a lot of times, you know, if you want to learn more about a person, follow them on their social media, see what they're doing, because that's going to only show you even more why you should want to work with somebody if that's something that you decide to do. And if nothing else, you're going to learn, you're going to, you're going to learn something out of it, which is always important. Absolutely. Um, some of the ideas I feel like indie authors should be doing a lot more Facebook lives, a lot more, um, maybe reading a chapter, have a story, a 15 minute story time, you know, just like with little kids and, 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 and talk about your book, talk about like what it was like the process. There's a lot of angles you can create for video around your book. You can talk about what it was like writing it. You can talk about the experiences that led up to it, who inspired you as an author, um, you can talk about certain passages that mean something to you. And then at the end of the story time, you know, offer a link in a specialized, uh, specialized offer. You can do an online book launch. Uh, there's, there's so many options out there for creatives. Right. And I mean, this, this applies to fiction as well as nonfiction. I think a lot yeah. of times people think, you know, think that with fiction, it's more limited, but if anything, like the idea of a story time is a great one. Because you can read it like an excerpt of your story and, and get them hooked. And then, oh, if you want to learn more, then get the rest of the book or check out the audio book or whatever else and get them hooked that way. So it's not just limited to nonfiction. And I think a lot of times people only focus on, well, with nonfiction, I, you know, I'm an expert, but with fiction, how do I, how do I sell that? And it's not that hard to do. Exactly. I'm going to show you something real fast. Yeah, go ahead. Go, go, go for it. So another thing you can do. Sorry about that. Another no thing worries. you can do um, is the influencer strategy. And so I had a guy who is um, a veteran author. He has a publishing empire of zombie fantasy and mech novels. <laughs> and I immediately, when we had our call, I said, dude, send me the mech book. I'm going to read this immediately. Um, so by doing this, he reaches out to somebody that's, got a, that's similar. You know, we're both veterans that's got an audience. And by sending me a book, what's going to happen is now I'm going to promote it. Now I'm going to tell people to buy it. Now I'm going to share his link. Um, and he sent me like three or four books. So I'm definitely going to hook him up. And this is something that indie authors can do is they can reach out to people that they know like their genre and then just, just reach out to them. Just be honest with what they need. Hey, I would love to get the word out. You know, you've got a big audience. I would love to send you a complimentary set of books. Um, what I could use is just some social media, maybe a 30 second testimonial video or a Facebook live about it and a share to your social media a lot of influencers and people with audiences are going to say yes to that. So this guy, I mean, he's going to be in the magazine. I'm going to send him out to my email list. I'm, I'm going to, you know, go into Facebook groups and like create specialized content because these stories are amazing. But that's, that's one thing you can do is the influencer strategy and it works out very well. Well, that's a great example too. I, I mean, a lot of times I don't think that authors think about that, that you could reach out and connect with an influencer. I mean, you're giving me a couple of ideas here that I need to be implementing more. So I'm definitely going to be doing that after this podcast, writing down some notes because, you know, I, I mean, that's, and that's kind of the way it is. I mean, that's, that's, this is a good example of like why I, lo I love to reach out and interview people because I always learn something from that interview process that blows my mind. And I'm like, Ooh, I should try that. Or I should do this. And, and, and that's, another, that's another angle you can take. If you're somebody who's not very well known, you can actually interview people as well. That can be a strategy as well. So let's talk a little bit about that because you've done that yourself. Um, you, you know, how do you take that and apply it towards somebody who's maybe a lot more well known where you want to connect with them and interview them in order to you know, learn from them and at the same time be able to maybe grow your audience or whatever else because that's the person that people would be interested in learning from. Such a good question. Yet again, you are a hell of an uh, interviewer. Well, thank you. Um, 
Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this, and I've I've uh, I'll, I'll share some strategies I've done that have worked out in the past. And you're absolutely right. When you interview people, you create a platform to elevate yourself as an expert. And I feel like more authors, there are two techniques we're going to cover. So first of all, have a media platform of some sort, even a blog. You can have a blog, you can have a YouTube video, you can have just a series of Zoom calls, you can have what I did with a magazine, a podcast. Um, there's probably 10 ways that you can conduct interviews. Um, once you have it, brand the life out of it. So don't just have, don't just tell people, oh, hey, I'm going to interview you on my Zoom show. That's not good enough. Um, it's the difference between saying you have a car versus saying you have a Maserati. So you need to work on the brand. You need to have graphics. You need to have a really catchy name. You need to have a regular, you know, uh, series of, of, of posts and, and active social media, all this stuff. Um, don't show up as an amateur is what I'm saying. Like get to a certain point. You don't have to have like 5,000 people watching, but you do have to have some credibility. Um, once that happens, you reach out and then you, you offer an interview you, and uh, just say, hey, I'll be happy to, you know, what you want to do ideally, Taylor, is get on a video call. You want to ask them, you want to say, hey, I would love to interview you. Could we get on a video call for like 12 minutes so I could, so I could just find out what you need the most or what you need promoted? They'll usually say yes. Once you got them on the video call, you're locked in. You've already got like a pretty strong yes. And so... All you have to do is just set up the time for the interview, find out what their pain point is. And then once you interview them, you can either use it, and this is my second technique, because what you want to do is you want to take your general population, the people that are like floating around in Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn world, and you want to get them into what I call a controlled environment where you are the alpha. So for an indie author, your Facebook group, your mailing list, your chat bot, um, your Zoom calls weekly, you know, if you have group calls, these are all ways where you take the general population and you bring them into an area where you can market to them, you can reward them, you, you're pretty much being a leader. And if the interview, there are two ways you can do it. You can release it for public consumption or you could keep it directly in your, your private, you know, platform. So for example, I interviewed Bradley. Brad Lee uh, is like the third sales guy in the world, like right under Grant Cardone. They're buddies. I'd never heard of him. A student of mine challenged me. He's like, hey, I'm just going to pick a celebrity and you, you see if you can interview him. I had an interview in two days, dude. Um, and what I did was I kept that interview private with Brad's permission. And I only show it in my, my uh, visibility course because we learned how to you know get to celebrities. So you can keep this interview as like, a carrot to attract people to your private Facebook group or your mailing list or whatever. Or you can release it for public consumption for a bunch of views for credibility for your stuff. So it really just depends on what your strategy is. You got to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. But you're right. Interviewing is so strong because it's going to lead to all kinds of good things. And plus, you can make incredible connections. I interviewed Scott Oldford, who's like this amazing business guy. He was like a millionaire by like 21 or something. And I have his number in my phone. And it just, I, I look at it like a little kid. I'm just like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know, I've interviewed Delta Force, SEAL Team 6, like some pretty crazy people. <laughs> and interviews was the, the way that I got that golden key. And you're absolutely right. More indie authors need to have an interview platform. Yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. I mean, I, I only started this probably, I, I started this a couple months ago and, and have already interviewed a couple people. You're my third interview, I believe. And, uh, and I've got a fourth interview lined up next week, you know, with a superhero fiction uh, website. So that'll be cool. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those cases where I think like when you are trying to go out there and establish something, you just have to be willing to put yourself out there. And in my case, this, this happened along, alongside the launch of my new uh, business website, Indie Author Business Success, and the launch of my newest, of, of one of my newest books, um, which was the, again, Indie Author Business Success. It's just a book, you know, that's all about how to escape that nine to five job by being an indie author. And so, yeah. you know, it, it was, it was a case of, well, you know, if I want to get this out here, and because I have a long-term vision in mind, not just the short term, you know, I was like, all right, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to start interviewing people as well, because that's going to be a way to establish credibility. And it's going to help people see that 
that I'm not just focused on me. I'm focused on helping other people out and everything else. But not only that, but I'm 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 focused on bringing access to people like yourself because at the end of the day, it's not just about wanting to learn from Taylor Elwood or Rob Garcia. It's wanting to learn from a variety of different perspectives and and see what applies to you and how you can and how that can help you. And when you're an indie author and you're thinking along those lines and you're thinking from a long-term perspective, you're going to get more people excited about your books because they're going to think, and, and everything else you offer, because they're going to think, well, what else is this person going to be doing? Because this person's a giver. They're not a taker. They're not trying to take from me. They're trying to give to me and help me out. I, I love that. And also another thing, Taylor, which is really interesting. First of all, I, I've, I've had these like flashes of, of ideas while you've been, while I'm listening to you. I never ever associated myself as an indie author. And I've never thought about that. And I really am an indie author. I don't talk to other authors. I do my own stuff and I've been way too much of a lone wolf. And that was a good light bulb. So thank you. Um, point two. You got to join my group. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you an invite um, after this. I'd love that. Um, and I could share, you know, my, my experiences and some of the things I've done that worked. And point two, when you start going back to indie authors and media platforms, when you start a media platform, dude, you can monetize. I, <laughs> I have two paying sponsors right now. I don't even have a podcast. <laughs> and so there are like nine ways you can monetize a podcast. And this is another thing I kind of teach my, my clients some strategies. But if an indie author starts a podcast, they can sell digital real estate. They can give on-air shout outs. They can give, you know, product endorsements. Um, and they can start getting either swag or payments even if they don't have a giant audience, they just have to make the offer, get it out there confidently, and then, you know, drive some traffic. But um, there's a lot of ways to monetize a media platform. And that's something people need to consider too. Well, and the other thing you have to remember too, I think, and this is really important, is you do start out small. Everyone starts at zero. Nobody starts out with like a list of people. Like, I mean, I started this a few months ago and I've got a small list of people now. And that's okay because, you know, a year down the line, it's going to be larger. A year down the line, I'll have a few more books out. I'll have courses out. I'll have other things out because th these are all things that are built. And I think a lot of times people get so fixated on they want to be there right now. Right. But, you know, I always apply the philosophy of The Slight Edge, which is a book I highly recommend anyone read, which is all about taking those slight changes each and every day. Like what are the good habits, you know, that you're going to follow? What are the things that you're going to do that are going to help you grow your business? Because your business will grow. You just have to put the work into it and you have to recognize you're not going to get there right away because that's just the reality of it. I mean, I, I started out two years ago, still working at a call center job after, you know, started doing the self-publishing thing. And two years later, I got out of it because I worked it every single day. And it was a wonderful and amazing experience to get back into self-employment. So you got to remember that, like, for those of you who are watching this, you're going to start small. You're going to start at zero. It doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you keep going each and every day because each and every day you're going to grow your business as long as you're focused. It's, it's such good advice and spot on. So I've been on my own for about four years and I was a tow truck driver when I first moved to San Diego. Um, and I, I worked myself out of my cubicle finally. And so especially indie authors need to realize that the growth is incremental and it's, it really is like little tiny payments at a time until you get that following, but you do grow, but also you have to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to ask for help, develop those extra income streams, um, figure out how to have money coming in from a few different directions maybe start doing speaking gigs, maybe, you know, uh, volunteering for free, speaking in colleges. That's what I did for a while. Uh, great screenshot opportunities, by the way. Um, but you have to do stuff that makes you visible and you have to be recognizable and you have to, uh, Taylor, I'll tell you that the hidden gym that I did, the one thing I did super, super uh, right was I focused on the network. I focused on two things, what people do and what they need. And by doing that, I've got this wild tribe of like 40 people that talk to me and hang out every single day, almost on my Facebook group. They love me. They're like my family. And just by developing their needs, sending them opportunities and really focusing, that's what helped me to grow. And that's what indie authors need to remember. Hey, uh, help your fellow authors out, build that network of support, you know, reach out to your fans that love your stuff, reward them send them an autographed photo. I don't know, you know, be creative. It's what you are. 
Yeah, and there's lots of ways to do that. I mean, it's it's not even regardless of what kind of author you are, what kind of stuff you write, there's lots of ways to help out. You know, you can do newsletter swaps, you can do interviews like this, you can, you know, you can do live streams where, you know, you're promoting each other's works, whatever. I mean, there's there's lots of different ways. I think, you know, really the sky's the limit. And a lot of times if you get so burrowed in on like, well, I have to do things this way. Well, I mean, that's where I always, my own saying to this is challenge what you know by discovering what you can learn. You know, certain things, those things may seem like they're facts, but usually they're not. The way, the best way to do, to challenge it is to, is to say, okay, I know this, but, but I don't know this. So I'm going to try this and see what happens and see how it changes what I know. Exactly. And, and that's one thing I'm 44 and I'm, um, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a cool age. Um, you you acquire a little bit of wisdom. Um, but one thing I'm always doing, I'm always focused on self-education. So one week I might watch YouTube videos on how to do my chat bot. Uh, I remember I bought a bunch of books on Amazon, um, how to create a YouTube channel and monetize it, uh, social media plans, things like this. And then, always start honing your skill set get better at something and and set aside time every single week an hour or two for self education for sure yeah i mean if you read 10 pages a day of a good book and you focus on and you focus on other learning opportunities in some form or manner you're going to get ahead further and you don't have to do it all at once yeah. i mean one of the mistakes i made a few years ago is i tried to do everything all at once and that was one of the reasons why my uh, my coaching business crashed and burned and that was okay. It was a good va valuable learning experience. Cause in the end, I realized I didn't really want to do that anyway. Um, but you know, it, it also taught me like, okay, like when I decided to go into self-publishing, I was like, I'm just going to focus on self-publishing and learning how to get these books out and market them. And then I added classes in like a little bit under a year ago. And then after that, now I'm starting to learn about virtual summits because that's the next big thing I want to add into my tier of, of things. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's things you're going to learn and want to do, but take your time about it because you're not going to learn it all at once. And it's not going to get all done in one day. Everyone, everyone is in such a hurry. And I think that that's like the worst mistake you can make. Slow down to hurry up is a better way to approach things. I completely agree. And if I'd have hit where I'm at now, like 10 years ago, it would have been a tragic mistake because I wouldn't have been mature enough to handle it. Um, I'm a lot of stand up comedians don't get famous until they hit 40 something. And by then they've hit that tipping point and they make more money than they've ever seen. But you know, they put in the work, you got to put in the hours, you got to get better at what you're doing. You got to improve your writing, you have to you have to look at the quality of the covers of your books. Um, pay attention to what your audience says about you, little things like that. And that's how you, that's how you improve. You know, I look at my stuff from four years ago, first issues of my magazine, when I first met you, and I was like, Oh God, that's awful. Primary colors and ugly fonts and all this stuff. And now I look at it and well, I've, I've hired a design guy, a layout guy, and, and I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. And yet at the same time, because you know, those skills, it helps you not only appreciate what they're doing better, but right. it's one of those things where you know what to look for, because you can look back and say, okay, I don't want to do it this way. And, you know, we all have to make mistakes. That's the other thing. You have to learn how to accept that you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to have setbacks, but if you stick with it and you have a positive attitude, you'll get there. And I think that's like so important. Like you want to reach out and connect with people. You want to interview them or get interviewed by them or, or whatever else recognize that nobody you're interviewing or talking with was always successful. Anyone who says that they were is lying. Very true. And, and I do have a question for you, Taylor. Um, what's your favorite book you've ever written? My favorite book that I've ever written. Wow. Because I've written so many so far. Uh, you know what? I would say it's actually the zombie apocalypse call center because it was, I, I wrote that while I was working at the call center job and it was really a satire designed to kind of poke fun at the whole call center, at, at the reality of call center work because call center work sucks. Let's just be brutally honest here. You know, it's, it's a humbling experience, especially in my case, I had been self-employed for nine years and I had to go back to work and that's the job I could find. So that was hard. And I was just like, man, I, but I took it. I was like, you know what? I am, I'm fine with, with going through some, some getting humbled a bit. I needed it. it. It really helped me get some perspective. 
and I did that job and I, I, I shoveled that shit as the saying goes and I did what I had to do. And afterwards it was like, as I, you know, a year into it, I'm like, I'm, I, I decided a half a year in, I decided to, to do the self-publishing thing. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I took my entire backlist away from the traditional publisher, self-published it. And then I started writing fiction as well. And I wrote that zombie apocalypse thing because it was like, you know what? I need to channel some of my frustration about this job into something that pokes fun. And at the same time has this, this thing of like zombies, like, okay, why would you have a call center for zombies? And it's grown into a wonderful <laughs> series. The latest book just came out last week, Heroes of the Zombie Apocalypse Call Center. And it's got at least two more go to go. That's great. That's, that's, you know, and I'll tell you something, man. Um, first of all, that's your creative outlet. And that's, you know, that's probably not your main jam. Um, but that's the one you turn to that's fun. And, exactly. And, you know, I'm just guessing, but, but I, I also do that too. And this is something I think that the audience could benefit from hearing is whenever I need to like really get into a creative zone, I shoot a big Rob video. So I created a character a couple of years ago uh, called Big Rob. He was a fugitive trucker with a handlebar mustache and he's just a dirt bag. He, he's, a few, he's a bootleg trucker who just, just will run anything if you have the cash for it. And he, you know, he, he had a school behind a Wendy's behind a Route 94 that was shut down by the feds. And I shot one video for it like three years ago. One of my buddies who's a blue collar steel worker absolutely loved it. And he said, dude, you got to make this into a series. This is hilarious. So three years later, I kind of dusted it off. And, and once in a while, when I need to laugh, I shoot a Big Rob video and it became a thing. So now I've got a ringer shirt that says Big Rob's Truck in School, you know, a big semi on an American flag. Uh, you know, I grow out the handlebar when I can. I put on a denim cap and, and I just get into character. I've got a YouTube channel for it. And it just, I don't do it often, but when I do do it, it really makes me laugh because, you know, Big Rob is like a little racist and really dumb He's just that guy, that really annoying relative that you kind of see like once a year and it's still too much. But by doing that, by going into a different persona or writing in a different, completely different, you know, genre, you can absolutely like rekindle that fire. And I, I the, the reactions to Big Rob are great. My friends laugh their asses off. It's just something funny because it's just something they see once in a while. But I think all creatives should do something completely out of the ordinary for them. I agree. And I think that when you do that and you, you have fun with it, it, it rejuvenates everything else you do, because then you're able to work on the, the stuff that, you know, maybe is a bit more of a slog, what have you, but it's just as important. So, I mean, I think it's, that's, that's a great example right there. And I, I love that. I'll have to check out those big Rob videos myself. It's so stupid. I have a script for it and everything. I've, I've now got the video backgrounds where you can see like the inside of a semi truck or a, a truck stop diner. And, uh, you know, just every, every time a video comes out, Big Rob's just talking about his, his you know, tragic ass life as a, a fugitive trucker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where can people find you on the web? Um, uh, let's see. I'm on Facebook, Rob Garcia or Rob the Warrior Strategist. Uh, my main website is yournextlevelsuccess.com. And then my magazine you can read for free at shiftlifedesign.com. Excellent. So, and those, uh, those websites will be on the show notes for people. So when you're checking this video out, go ahead and click those sites and go visit them and, and learn more about uh, Rob and his work. And any last tips you want to share with us? Um, I want to share for the authors in particular, remember that on the days when you're feeling uncertain about your work, that at the end of the day, it's not about you, it's about your audience. And they might be waiting exactly for what you need to put out. And so don't hesitate. Think about them, not your own stuff. Yes, I, 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 I'll add to that one little thing. How many times I've written something where somebody said to me afterwards, I really needed to read that right then. You know, and, 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 I, and, and, and part of it was me maybe writing about my uncertainty or whatever else it was, but I also was writing with that audience in mind and how wonderful that can be to just know that something you shared actually made an impact on someone's life and that can re-spark you and focus you on what really matters. That's, that's my, I always say this, my favorite message to get, especially from strangers is I needed this today. And yeah. you, that's when you start to realize you need that you Absolutely. All right. Well, folks, uh, that's my interview with Rob. And um, thank you again for coming on, Rob. I really appreciate it. 
And uh, we will have another interview sometime in the near future. So uh, take care and uh, talk to you later.